comes to Warner Brothers' DC portion of their Hall H presentation at Comic-Con this year, it was definitely short, but so far, uh, word, on the, word on the street is that it was sweet. Uh, we'll see how the perspective of time uh, reflects back on that uh, when people might say, well, you know what, maybe they didn't reveal enough, especially when we see what perhaps Marvel will do later today. But I think that there's something very interesting about watching a studio publicly try to find its way with a property. Uh, a lot of what happens with Marvel, they just seem to always, you know, just be full of win. Uh, every decision turns out to be a good one. Uh, and it must be so frustrating to DC. They're shaking their fists at them across uh, the halls of Comic-Con. Uh, but I think that while I think DC and Warner Brothers don't get everything right, they clearly have a lot of heart and they have a very intense fan base so I think we find ourselves rooting for them uh, despite some of those bad choices and I think that's very much the case today uh, again short but sweet presentation and not a lot of tell more show no big uh, discussion about casting no Dwayne Johnson confirmation it's Shazam or Black Adam uh, no talk about Aquaman. And we even know that Cyborg has been cast, for instance, and it's supposed to be Jason Momoa as Aquaman. No discussion of that at all. No reveals in that category. No reveals of release dates. Nothing like that at all. Maybe Nikki Fink was wrong. Maybe they decided not to announce that after she'd uh, broken the news. Maybe they never planned to announce it, but it's their plan behind the scenes. Uh, we don't know because, as I said, he didn't really say anything at this presentation, but they did show. They showed the Wonder Woman costume. We got to see that for the first time. And if you want uh, to hear my analysis of that, in-depth analysis, you can click here for this video. Uh, right now, here we're going to talk about the presentation as a whole. Uh, so they showed each of our DC Trinity member in their costume and the posters they have. Uh, the Superman uh, shot we'd seen before. It's him in the, on the rainy roof. Uh, and then also we've got Batman, as many of you are pointing out, from a different perspective of that Batmobile shoot, uh, you know, kind of in a warehouse there, uh, the way that photo looks. And then, of course, there's Wonder Woman near some kind of lava pit uh, for the first time, uh, rounding it out. And then, so not only in the costume, but as we were saying, Warner Brothers was able to go for that easy shot, that easy headline of having their actors appear live for the first time together. So you're seeing DC's Trinity for the first time ever, by the way. So this is truly a historic moment, uh, you know, and maybe that was enough. Uh, they don't need too much fanfare. Uh, it's just historic to finally see DC's Trinity in live action together for the first time. Uh, and in the flesh, because Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and Gal Gadot all showed up at Hall H. They didn't say anything. Again, the whole presentation was kind of on mute, but they were there. They got their photo taken. You can see it here, uh, and we're going to discuss all that. But for, first, let's go with the footage they showed. Uh, so the description coming out of Comic-Con is that uh, you see a, a rainy roof. You know, whenever Batman and Superman fight, it always happens in Gotham. They always take the fight to Gotham. Maybe it's Metropolis, because this Metropolis and this DC Cinematic Universe is pretty dark as well. But there, are, it's got to be Gotham, because as you're about to see, there's a bat signal. And who's turning it on but none other than Batman? And uh, word is he's in armor. Uh, sp some people are referencing Dark Knight Returns, or Dark Knight Rises, uh, the armor like that, but also I think it's a reference to Frank Miller. I think really expect Frank Miller references uh, uh, across the board when it comes to Zack Snyder's uh, films here in the DC Universe. And if you really want to make sure you're prepared, you have two years, uh, you might as well go pick up Frank Miller's uh, The Dark Knight Returns. And also he made a sequel, which isn't so hot, but then you'll have at least the full um, materials that are going to be at uh, Zack Snyder's disposal so that you can start to see uh, what's going on here, where he's where he's choosing, what he's leaving behind, and if you think he, he interpreted it correctly. So there's a little bit of something for you to do if you, uh, 2016, can't get here fast enough. Uh, so Batman turns on his own bat signal and he points up towards the sky uh, and as the camera pans up who should be in the sky but of course Superman and then this is very cool Batman's eyes apparently light up like a blue kind of color bluish I would think traditional white but maybe the blue tinge but we were all kind of hoping that eventually Batman would incorporate the white eyes and I've always thought that was a good idea because eyes are very telling you can tell someone's eyes you can really get a sense of their persona so that if you were to see them in real life sans costume I think if you were having an engaged enough conversation you would start to pick up on a similarity but by having the white eyes I think that further distances uh, the humanity of that uh, character, that, that a vigilante, uh, and makes him more of a symbol, a legend, the legend of the bat. So I think it's a very smart choice. And then as Batman's eyes light up, Superman kind of like, you know, it's like uh, animals flashing, you know, their, their plumage. Uh, Superman's eyes light up red with heat vision. So, you know, it's a real, uh, it's a real mano-a-mano -mano contest of like who has the cooler car, basically. 
and uh, then the logo comes up, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Now Wonder Woman didn't show up there. She's not a huge character from what we're hearing in this film. Uh, she's going to be, you know, on the edges circling for later movies. I mean, obviously, I guess she's going to show up in costume, and also the rumor is she'll take place, uh, I mean, she'll take part considerably in the final battle of the film. And this is how she's going to look. So here's a, just to have it here as well, so you don't have to click over to that video right now about the discussion of the costume. Here's Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman again. Uh, and then you can also see these, uh, you know, we'll put up again just real quick, these, uh, the look at the Trinity in, in character almost, you could say. Uh, so I think it's very nice. And also, just for fun, here's another shot of the arena, of uh, Hall H, and how they have all these 360 screens up. I think that's a lot of fun. Hall H is very, very big, uh, and I think that instead of making people feel like they're stuck in the back of the room, this kind of creates an immersive experience for everyone in it, and everyone can really see the footage. Because isn't that what Comic-Con largely is about? Seeing cool stuff for the first time before anybody else. Uh, so let's also go to these in, in, uh, the in-character uh, costumes. Uh, but I guess just real fast, as long as I have it up here for myself, uh, Batman, I think it's fu uh, really funny. Uh, we're seeing a trend of these superheroes getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I'm going to talk about Thor later today in the poster that was revealed uh, for uh, the, the last batch of Avengers Ul Ultron posters. He looks huge there, and I think both Batman and Superman look quite big. Batman actually looks the biggest. I don't know if he's just the beefiest or if, you know, he's got some armor on under there. Uh, but a lot of people are saying that Gal Gadot looks a little too thin for their tastes. She looks as about as small as she does in the comics, I'd say, and she certainly seems the right height as everybody else. Thank goodness and she's not like a foot shorter or shorter than the rest of them. I think that to the credit of DC, when you see all three of them together here, they, they fit. They do seem like a trinity. They seem like equals, and that's really important. And we haven't even seen Gal Gadot do anything. Uh, and so, I mean, we're familiar kind of with this Batman. We're familiar with Batman in the movies. Of course, we know Henry uh, Cavill's uh, Man of, uh, Superman for Man of Steel, but this is an entirely new entity here in the middle, and I think it works. I also think it's nice she's in the middle. Um, that's, I think sometimes you see her go there because she's the, the one woman, but again, I think it helps make her seem like part of the group. Now let's go to them in person. I, this is my favorite photo, actually, of Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck, because I never would have guessed they'd have the same hair in the movie. Now, in the comics, often it's hard to tell Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne apart, because comic book artists, uh, sometimes they don't have a lot of range in terms of the faces they can draw. Uh, you can have to tell characters apart by their hair and costumes. Uh, and, you know, Bruce Wayne and uh, Clark Kent have very similar looks. Uh, and that's often been remarked on in the comics and, and in the animation uh, in a quite funny, uh, tongue-in-cheek kind of way. But here, not only do they have the same type of hair, but they're even combing it alike. One is single white femaleing the other. I think that's really funny. Also, you can see here, though, that Ben Affleck is bigger than Henry Cavill, so that's interesting as well. And right away, they're kind of like assuming their roles with uh, Ben Affleck in his badass leather jacket and uh, uh, Henry Cavill a little more lighter with the white shirt or more open shirt. Uh, but I don't know why they would comb their hair the same way. I honestly would be like, guys, don't you call each other in the morning? Or when they showed up, I'd be like, let's, let's, uh, let's shoot it out. One of you has to change your hair right now. You both can't go out there like that. But, you know, they can see the way they're looking at each other. Maybe it was somewhat intentional. But I actually, you know, a lot of people have done mock-ups of uh, Ben Affleck uh, for how he would look in the movie, and they've taken photos where he has the close cropped hair. And I actually have to say that's the look that I would have gone with because I think it works probably, like, look at all that hair and all that hair gel. He's going to have such cow hair when he takes his, uh, his, his mask off every night. Alfred's going to be like, oh, you know, you have to wash your hair every evening. I got to clean the inside of this thing out. He sweated it all up. Uh, you know, I think just you know, for breathability and functionality. And also, I think Ben Affleck just looks good with a very tight uh, haircut. That's probably where I would have gone for this. Uh, but maybe Snyder wants to play up the fact they're supposed to look similar in their civilian identities. Uh, but here's the three of them together. Uh, they look great. Gal Gadot looks much smaller here. Um, you know, in terms of her frame than she does when she's in the Wonder Woman costume. So that's probably Photoshop, lighting, etc. Uh, I think that's very interesting. Uh, but they look like they're, they're like they look like they're in a good mood. They, you know, obviously, how could you not be in a good mood when you're in Hall H as DC's Trinity? Uh, but you know, clearly they 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 know they're going to go any minute. Uh, and I, you know, I think the person who looks the most nervous maybe is Ben Affleck. But he should. I don't think he should be nervous about this anymore. I think it's clear that as the discussions we've been having the last few days about his cape and cowl and then him in the cape and cowl, uh, that I think that we're really rooting for him. And I think we understand how difficult this task is. And I think maybe that's actually what's playing into the Wonder Woman uh, scenario a little bit. I think we're sympathetic to how what a what a, a ordeal it is to portray these iconic characters and get it right and how much uh, must be weighing on these this talent. 
And, you know, they don't seem like they're taking it for granted, and I think that's to their credit. And so I think that they're, they're going to get a little bit of sympathy from us. I think Zack Snyder will be probably under the most scrutiny. Uh, but I, and as I said, I might have had my problems with Man of Steel, but I thought Henry Cavill ended up being a fantastic Superman. Uh, so here's your DC Trinity. What do you think of them? And what do you think of how Warner Brothers handled their Hall H presentation for Comic-Con? Did they bring it? Was this enough? Uh, do you think they gave enough fanfare to this historic moment? Um, it would have been nice to have someone from the comics here, actually, I think, uh, now that I think about it, because uh, the, the Trinity is that we've always seen them in the comics, and that's where DC has played them up. Uh, do you think this, uh, this like, flyby, this drive-by, uh, was it was was enough just the sheer excitement of it or would you have preferred maybe a little bit more information to come out of this uh, presentation so that's the comic-con uh, 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 wrap-up of 2014 for uh, the DC situation uh, and we'll see what Marvel what they fire back with later today I can bet you because again they have an entire hour or an hour and a half dedicated to just Marvel movies you will be hearing a lot out of that uh, panel whereas you've um, you've just really gotten some photo ops some fantastic photo ops but that's all you've really gotten from Warner Brothers uh, and DC. All right, leave your comments below. Stay tuned for more coverage. Bye.